YouTube, Mr. Use Boss here, and this video is about the iPad Air 3. So we all know that this is a device that is going to be coming soon, whether or not this is the actual name that Apple use. Now the iPad Air line has been a pretty revolutionary step up in terms of the actual thinness on offer here, and very little else to be honest. I mean, Apple has actually flaunted the tablet as being the thinnest and lightest full-size tablet ever to be released, and they were right. Does that actually make a difference to real world usage? Well, sort of. I mean, to be honest, when you first pick up the tablet, you genuinely think, wow. The iPad Air 2 especially, being just 6.1mm thick, really does redefine the tablet experience. It almost feels like a heavy sheet of paper. So, I mean, in that sense, yes, it is very, very good. However, there is a lot of things still wrong with the iPad line, especially if you compare them to Android and Windows tablets, which are much more open. So in this video, I'm going to talk about what I want for, to see from the iPad Air 3, and then what I actually think will probably end up happening. So let's go. The iPad Air 3 Pro. Now this is also something which I think will be a pretty cool thing for Apple to do, to actually introduce a Pro and a standard model. So I want it to have a quad core processor, that is really important. I mean Apple introduced the dual core processors and they've stuck with it for ages. I want to see a slightly larger display but with the same resolution so not to impact performance. Waterproofing is absolutely necessary in this day and age. It will be such a cool thing to be able to take your tablet into the shower or bathroom and then take it onto a beach and not worry about it getting ruined. True multitasking, the ability to instantly switch between apps and keep them all open at the same time. Now I don't want the iPad Air 3 to be thinner than previous models, in fact I'd actually rather it's a bit thicker. I think 7mm is the sweet spot, being light enough to actually hold comfortably in the hand but also heavy enough to actually be solidly built. Now, I think HDMI out is a really cool thing to have. The ability to just hook it straight up directly to a TV and get a 1080p viewing experience, that'll be really awesome. And finally, being primarily a music listening device for a lot of users, front facing powerful boom sound equivalent speakers would really benefit the iPad Air 3. So here is what I actually think we'll get. To be released sometime in Q3 2015, the iPad Air 3 will have an A9, probably dual core processor. I mean, I think to try and save the effort of re-optimizing their software for quad core, Apple have been sticking with dual core for quite some time now and just, you know, improving the architecture and stuff, but I think we'll again probably get a rehash of their A8 processor. Now I don't think they'll actually increase the display size as much as I actually want them to, and I think they'll probably stick with their supposed retina display, even though other phones and tablets have seriously surpassed that. I highly doubt they'll make this device waterproof, it's something that Apple haven't done at all, but it's something that I think, especially as we've seen in other devices, has been a really useful thing to have. Now multitasking is supposedly one of iOS 8's key benefits, but Apple has never actually really nailed this concept, I mean, the whole point of multitasking is that you can actually genuinely do two things at once, but as soon as you open a really demanding app, all the others just close when the device runs out of RAM. Now Apple seem to think that a thinner is better device philosophy is the key to success, but I think that once you get to a certain point, I think that really needs to go. Now I think, fair enough, I think that from the original iPad to the iPad Air, clearly the loss of thickness has actually benefited the device, but much more than this, we're just going to see compromise after compromise, whether it be the battery, the internals, or just some other feature that has to be sort of dimmed down. So I'd rather they make a really full feature device and it just be a bit thicker, but I'm guessing the iPad Air 3 will probably be even thinner than the 2. So Apple has also been known for creating a very closed ecosystem. For example, if you want to connect your iPad to a TV, you have to buy an Apple cable for that. And there's basically Apple equivalents of just about everything for everyone else. So I don't think that's going to change and I think Apple will continue to adopt this philosophy, which does have its benefits, mind you. And the last thing, I think that speakers will not really change position. It clearly is, as we've seen from the HC1, a lot of effort to actually create front-facing speakers and it does come with other compromises, for example the length of the device. So Apple, for engineering purposes, will almost definitely stick with downwards-facing speakers, even though the end result is not going to be as impressive. So to conclude, the iPad Air 3 is still a device to look forward to. Although it's not going to have all the awesome things that we want to see from the iPad, it's still going to be an impressive tablet. Since its launch, the iPad Air 2 has been voted by almost every tech website as the best tablet to buy, due to a combination of its thinness, build quality and optimised software. It's also a very powerful tablet, even though it's only running a dual core processor, Apple have done a really good job optimising the kit, and actually making sure that all the apps that you want to work, just work. Thanks for watching guys.